academic journey of each student is unique. At Robo Siksha Kendra, Strandon Schools, we expand possibilities of technology and training. We work with CSR partners to close the digital divide by setting up digital labs, blended labs, hybrid labs in the form of Robo Shiksha Kendra. Our students encourage us to do more with their dexterity and demand for digital and do-it-yourself activities. With our partners, we commit to providing quality, equity, and accessibility in education for all communities we exist in. Fueling this mission to help millions of students achieve their true potential is our special guest today. Please put your hands together to welcome Dr. Lalit Singh, Managing Director, McGraw Hill, India. Lalit, Dr. Lalit, welcome to the show. How are you? Thanks so much, Bhuvan. I'm uh, very happy to be with you today. Thanks for inviting me. Okay, diving straight into the questions of our students. Our students are curious to know, Dr. Lalit, what are you tinkering with these days? Right, so uh, a lot uh, in short, but uh, I think specifically what I'm dealing with these days is how to make learning individualized by using an appropriate mix of uh, content, pedagogy, and technology so that we can handhold each individual student in their unique learning path from their starting point to the desired level of competence. Excellent, excellent. Personalized learning that is very unique, as unique, in fact, as the next question, our students are also interested in knowing that what is that one STEM challenge that students will have to solve for in the near future? Such an important question, one, uh, and it's, I mean, it's not just a STEM challenge, it's a challenge for the mankind, and that is sustainability. I mean, we live in a very, very uh, stressed world right now. The human population is still growing, will continue to grow for another you know, 20, 30 years, if at all it's stabilized at some kind. And we know that we are running out of natural resources like water, minerals, hydrocarbon fuels. Global warming is troubling us you know, big time. It will continue to get worse in the times to come. So we need to find solutions to all these problems and, and we need to find sustainable and scalable you know, uh, solutions which apply uh, across the world, which operate at a certain scale. So that I think, you know, finding those uh, holistic sustainable solutions for these uh, fundamental issues is a big, big challenge. And I think STEM students have a big role to play in that. For example, you know, we, we talk about global warming and we also talk about, you know, uh, alternative uh, you know, fuels for, uh, uh, let's say electric vehicles, for instance. I mean, we do have some piecemeal solutions, but we don't have holistic solutions which can apply at scale. And that should be a big, big area for research and uh, you know, uh, for the investments in future. So any students who have interest in that area should look at sustainability as a holistic goal for themselves to look at. Wow, absolutely. Our students are working on sustainable solutions in our labs. And I am very certain that next global laureates will be from one of the STEM labs. Our students want to know uh, your response to how important is hands-on training for school students? I think hands-on training is indispensable in the current scenario, uh, and not just because the new education policy also uh, kind of makes it uh, important, but also because this is how learning happens and learning translates into action at a, at a larger level. When the students are introduced to applications of what they have learned in their classroom in the society, learning comes to life. I think hands-on training is very, very important. Wow. Uh, so succinctly put for our students. Students, I hope you are taking notes, uh, you know, as to what Dr. Lalit is mentioning. Okay, Dr. Lalit, you mentioned learning to action in your past question. Our students want to know from you how STEM education helps students learn entrepreneurship. Right. Entrepreneurship is like, you know, in, in a much broader sense, taking ownership of, uh, you know, uh, doing something that we feel should be done. And the fundamental drivers behind entrepreneurship are, uh, you know, uh, logical thinking and real world problem solving. And these are basically, you know, uh, scientific traits that every uh, everybody who wants to be an entrepreneur should take on. Now, entrepreneurship may or may not be a particular discipline within science, but this ability to think logically and put together a, a solution for a question that bothers me is very, very important to entrepreneurship. 
Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. That was such a, you know, um, uh, such a, uh, uh, you know, a crisp response. Okay. Moving on to my next question, Dr. Lalit, our students uh, come across several myths and misconceptions, and we are sure you have come across myths and misconceptions uh, about STEM and STEAM education. Can you illuminate this area, uh, you know, which is, which we are working on? Can you share your insights on this subject, please? It's such a it's such an important question, right? So, uh, and I get this asked by a lot of students, including my own kids. The real question is, how do what I study in school help me later on in my life, right? And my uh, grade nine, uh, I mean, my son who studies in grade nine uh, very recently asked me, I am learning about these different kind of lenses. How is it relevant to me if I don't want to study physics later on? And um, the, the simple thing is, if I know how a particular lens works, uh, I can actually solve the human problem of, uh, you know, uh, eyesight problems. So, uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, if I understand how a particular concept really uh, works in at fundamental level, I can combine those together later on and uh, solve the real world problem. So another example is, you know, how do photochromatic lenses work, right? That's a combination of optics plus a bit of a chemistry because there are, uh, you know, uh, uh, so there are silver chloride molecules inside the lens, which lead to the photochromatic effect that is there. Another example is precision engineering. I mean, we we, we all learn to use you know vernier calipers in school without really knowing how to apply and where to apply it later on in life. But ask somebody who is in uh, precision engineering, and they will tell you how critical that skill is to use that simple instrument. So, uh, I mean, I think it's it's a myth that th learning theory early on doesn't really uh, always help later on in life. It's just that those concepts have to come together to solve real world problems later on. And that's where learning becomes part of life. Wow, absolutely. Dr. Lalit, to our students, this is very interesting. Students, there are so many aspects to lenses themselves. And as Dr. Lalit mentioned, integrated learning is most important to understand all facets of its use and application will help you innovate better. Oh my God, thank you so much, Dr. Lalit, for such a beautiful uh, you know, and inspiring answer for our students. Okay, since you seem to me as a very well-read and hands-on STEM pursuant enthusiast yourself, can you tell our students one subject, topic, or activity that you have done by self-learning? Uh, quite, quite a few, you know, uh, across my career. But uh, if I were to just cite one, I'll say uh, learning Microsoft Excel. Now, it's not essentially a STEM subject in itself, but it's such an important skill to have. And uh, learning Excel for data analysis and business modeling, I think that has been a pretty much a self-taught subject to me. And and I believe you know on um, on for, for skills like these you know uh, or topics like these, one could read as many books as they want and attend as many classes or courses as they as they wish to. But unless you really start putting that into practice and taking you know uh, real problems to solve uh, on your own, you you can't really master those skills. So self-learning is very very critical for you know, a variety of subject areas. This, in this one particular instance that I quoted you, learning Microsoft Excel was was, was quite a life-changing, you know, uh, skill for me at, at that time. Absolutely, Dr. Lalit, such an important aspect. Microsoft Excel students is a brilliant tool to hone up your statistical skills, no matter whether you are from humanities, commerce, or science background. It is the simplest tool to crunch thousands of data points in a very simple manner. Statistics is the simplest form of mathematics for all our students. You must go and read up on what Lalit ji has mentioned, Microsoft Excel. Okay, to my next question, Dr. Lalit. Okay, uh, our students, they work in Robo Siksha Kendra and they learn a lot of new skills, you know, they, they become dexterous, but they are curious to know what are some of the STEM career choices that the school students can aspire for. All right, so, I mean, if we, if we look at STEM, fundamentally at a very high level, there are three broad directions students could take. They could get into research, they could get into uh, pure academics, or they could get into the practice. So, uh, you know, uh, there, there are three broad directions they could take, but going one step deeper, uh, they can be very subject specific, you know, domains they can get into, or they could also got, get into those interdisciplinary subject areas. So uh, it really depends on one's core interest and uh, where do they find uh, their passion. 
but but there are a lot of uh, you know uh, opportunities that can open up uh, from from there just just one example i mean uh, you, if if students are really uh, tracking the news uh, in last few years several of our iits and triple iits actually have started you know uh, very interesting interdisciplinary courses in biomedical sciences and you know uh, applied medical uh, research so iit kanpur for example just a few weeks back started a new uh, you know uh, medical school with an intent to promote you know uh, interdisciplinary medical science so those are very interesting areas and uh, they they kind of uh, you know also break the myth that you can get deeper into one particular discipline only so that is uh, one's particular you know individual interest if they want to particularly go, go deeper into one subject area fine or if you want to apply it in an interdisciplinary setting that's also uh, a big societal need that we have wow so beautifully put dr lalit that learning the unknown will unlock what options exist in the market wow this is for all our curious enthusiast students learning the unknown so go ahead and explore okay to my next question our students work as teams building robots programming robots and doing a lot of other things in the labs can you guide our students on what is that one must attribute of a team player that they must pursue to succeed it's a very important question uh, you know and you and you mentioned robot interestingly you know one doesn't have to be a robot in order to be a team player right so uh, i'll say adaptability is you know one of those core attributes uh, you know which is not often talked about and as much uh, at a school level i'll say but but later on in life that's a very very you know a critical and crucial skill to have in order to be a team player i mean individually we can be as highly skilled or motivated or competent in our certain areas but when we work in a team we realize you know we are only as strong or as fast as the weakest or the slowest person in the team is so uh, that's where our uh, you know our ability to be a team player comes to the fore and if we, if we can adapt up to the situation and you know take charge of things that need to be taken charge of we can uh, make sure that the team moves ahead in at the desired pace and in the desired direction so i'll say if there is one thing i would like to highlight to uh, you know uh, our students that will be adaptability wow fantastic uh, dr lalit you've spoken like a major general of the army and you know you command so many million of students through your access that you provide through to education you know it is really important for our student students i hope you are taking notes okay this is a very very important question that our students want to know from you they want to know from you what is your favorite equation formula or quote and why right so so uh, there is this famous quote from henry ford uh, of ford motors and uh, he once very famously said that if i had asked people what they wanted they would have said faster horses i mean he of course said in the context of innovation and the need to you know build better cars and and superior technology etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's where this reference to faster horses comes from uh, but if i have to just just kind of uh, take that into the context of our uh, students i think the real implication for us is that we should be focused on the problem in its wider sense and be open minded for all possible solutions to that particular problem rather than looking into th- looking at things in a very very you know narrow mindset uh, of what we already know there are there are so many things that we do not know and uh, it is our own uh, you know limitations of our own thinking that uh, at times limit our ability to create uh, solutions for future so uh so yeah so again i'll say uh, being open minded and uh, being uh, open to suggestions from uh, wherever uh, i think is the key to find those solutions to problems that we have not solved so far wow beautifully and uh, you know what a way to quote such a legend students in the automotive industry in the city of new york to get rid of uh, uh, horse feces cars were introduced and model t car was introduced by uh, henry ford which dr lalit has just quoted so go out and read up about him as well thank you dr lalit for uh, you know uh, sharing a, a stem leader with our students uh, you know from the past okay so this is a bonus for our students okay moving on to my next question uh, dr lalit children took to digital classes easily 
and now they are going back to schools with precautions and vaccination. Please share tips for them on setting up STEM clubs as the building block before we set up STEM labs and do hands-on learning. It's such an important question. I'm glad you are asking this question. Um, and uh, I mean, we, we, we of course know that uh, students and teachers and schools, they switched to digital learning over the last two years. But I think in, in the broader context, it was much more than digital learning or, or online classes that, that happened, right? So these two years have taught us a lot, you know, in a, in a much broader sense. So for example, we knew, we, we, we got to learn that a virus that existed for, for decades and centuries could so easily mutate into something which was deadly, right? Uh, we, we experienced the kind of life, you know, uh, uh, the, the kind of lockdowns that are a once in a lifetime experience. We, we never knew how to deal with a, with a lockdown, not just in the learning context, but in the overall context also. Then look at the you know, creation of vaccine, the discovery and development of the vaccine in such a fast you know, time frame. Uh, I mean, this was the fastest uh, a vaccine for any disease uh, was developed in this time frame. So all these are very, very uh, important learnings. And when we get back to the school, when we get back to the labs, I think it's important to take all these things there focus on the fundamentals, build on the fundamentals, and think of a scale, think of interdisciplinary, you know, a scope of problems and solutions. That's what I think this STEM clubs should be focusing on. Wow, yoo-hoo! So encouragement to all the STEM clubs, all those who are thinking of opening their STEM clubs at schools, getting together in, uh, you know, robo clubs. <laughs> all right, okay. So moving on to my next and last question from Dr. Lalit. Dr. Lalit, our uh, students are very curious to know that you've done so much in life, you know, you've learned, self-learned self and so on. Which is your favorite STEAM subject, STEM subject and why? Right. So although many people debate whether medicine is actually a STEM subject or not, but as a discipline, I think this is what my favorite discipline in, uh, in, in STEM is. And, uh, and I think it's such an important applied discipline, right? Uh, uh, it combines concepts from physics, chemistry, biology, mechanics, you know, engineering, all those disciplines to, to bring together. And uh, that's where we get to understand the, you know, the complex interplay of, of all these uh, subject areas. I mean, that's how we learn how the structure of the body is, how it functions, why it, and how it gets, you know, abnormal and uh, uh, how to diagnose it, how to treat it. If you look at all these aspects, I mean, there's, there is some art to it. There is some art of service to it. But before that art and that service comes in, there's a complex science there that we need to really, really understand. So, of course, you know, I've done uh, a few different things in life, but my favorite STEM subject till date remains medicine. So students, if you are exploring medicine as a science subject, you know, I hope you were taking notes to Lalit's answer to our question. Wow. Thank you, Lalit, for sharing your insights with our students and helping them learning about science. Your vision of how research data practices helps students and educators learn more is very inspiring and will help our community. Our students will certainly learn incremental improvements caused by cognitive learning and behavior psychology you know are all they all go into understanding integrated learning at robo shiksha kendra our students draw upon benefits of these pedagogies and they learn from combining known and unknown knowledges the ever changing need of this world we live in is uh, to turn opportunities for our students Hands-on learning at our STEM labs helps students learn quicker, retain longer, and reimagine at a dive. So, uh, you know, thank we thank uh, Dr. Lalit for joining this STEM talk with leaders, and we thank all our viewers for sharing this video with parents and peers. Till we open a Robo Shiksha Kendra near you, keep tinkering. Namaste.